Now, let us take a closer look at the anterior pituitary. Um, and we, we remember that the anterior pituitary produces a number of peptide hormones. So one good example of the peptide hormones produced by the anterior pituitary is what is known as thyroid stimulating hormone, also known as thyrotropin. And the function of thyrotropin is to stimulate thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones. And of course, we do have corticotropin, also known as adenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH. And the function of ACTH is to stimulate the adrenal cortex to produce hormones such as cortisol and androgens. Of course, if we take an example of cortisol, one of the functions of cortisol is to increase blood glucose levels. And when you have increased glucose levels in blood, you have stimulation of beta cells of the pancreas to produce insulin. And then we do have um, two other hormones, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And these two hormones have an effect in the ovaries. We will discuss the details of these hormones when we talk about the reproductive hormones. You also have prolactin, and you know that the function of prolactin is to stimulate production of milk in the mammary gland. So if you take a look at these hormones produced by the anterior pituitary, most of them don't have direct effect. For example, thyrotropin has to stimulate thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones, and it is the thyroid hormones that will have direct effects to increase metabolism. So most of the anterior pituitary hormone don't have direct effects. But of particular importance is growth hormone. Growth hormone has direct effect to promote growth in many tissues of the body. So when we discuss the anterior pituitary, most of the time we focus on the growth hormone, the reason being this is the hormone that have direct effect to stimulate growth. And other hormones like thyroid stimulating hormone will be discussed when we discuss the thyroid, corticotropin when we discuss the adrenal cortex, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone when we discuss the reproductive system, as well as prolactin also when we discuss physiological changes in pregnancy. So if we take a closer look at the growth hormone, simply as the name implies, the function of growth hormone is to promote growth in many body tissues. So it has the effect in many body tissues. So the other name for growth hormone is somatotropic hormone or somatotropin. And the way growth hormone promotes growth, it does so by increasing number of cells, that is proliferation of cells, but also differentiation of these cells uh, to take up a specialized function. So growth hormone affects both increased number as well as differentiation. So this is a graph that shows the effect of growth hormone. And basically what you have here, you have uh, body weight on this axis and you have days, number of days on this axis. And this is an experiment which was uh, done in two groups of animal. So the first group was injected daily with growth hormone and the second group acted as control. That means no growth hormone was injected. So what you can see obviously here, if you look at the body weight, um, let's take an example of on the um, uh, 200th day. What you can see here, the weight of the control animal was actually 100 grams, while that of um, the animals that received growth hormone daily was 200, almost twice as much the weight of the control animal. So obviously you can see the effect of growth hormone um, in weight gain. So you have more weight gain when you have growth hormone and less weight gain when you have no growth hormone. So this is an obvious effect of growth hormone. So what growth hormone does basically is to enhance body protein and to use up fat stores and to conserve carbohydrate. So you have three main effects. When it comes to protein, you actually enhance body protein. When it comes to fat, you burn or you use fat. And when it comes to carbohydrates, you actually conserve, like don't use carbohydrate. This is the effect of growth hormone. And if we look closely, um, what happened with the enhancement of body protein is basically increasing protein synthesis. So the effect of growth hormone is to increase protein synthesis. And number two, the effect of growth hormone is to increase mobilization of fatty acid from adipose tissues. So we know that the adipose tissues are the stores of fat. So growth hormone is actually breaking down the stores 
in order to use the fat to produce energy. And when it comes to carbohydrate metabolism, uh, the function of growth hormone is to decrease the rate of glucose utilization throughout the body. So that means you're not using up glucose. So by so doing, you're actually conserving the carbohydrate. So one important effect <coughs> of growth hormone, as we have seen before, is to promote protein deposition in tissues. And protein deposition in tissue is being promoted by one, enhancement of amino acid transport through plasma membrane. So for protein to be built, amino acid has to move into the cells. So the movement of amino acids into the cell is facilitated by growth hormone. Number two, enhancement, sorry for the typo here, is enhancement of translocation in ribosome. Translocation is um, the, um, the translation, sorry. Translation is the process whereby the mRNA is actually being uh, translated into a protein and this process happened in the ribosome and this is also um, affected by growth hormone. So growth hormone facilitate or promote or enhance the process of translation. And number three, um, growth hormone increases nuclear transcription of DNA to RNA. So basically you, you, you take the genetic code from the DNA um, into the messenger RNA and this process is known as transcription. So growth hormone also facilitate or enhance transcription. But number four, growth hormone decreases the catabolism of protein and amino acid. So when, when growth hormone is building up new protein, it is also preventing the breakdown of already built protein. So the net effect is basically building up protein. That is the effect of growth hormone when it comes to protein metabolism or protein utilization within the body. So this is a simple diagram just showing what happens. So you do have amino acids, the building blocks. So incorporation of amino acid to form protein is influenced by growth hormone. And also taking these proteins to build tissues like skeletal muscle is also influenced by growth hormone. So in so doing, you basically have build up of protein. And if we take a good example of skeletal muscle, you can see that incorporation of amino acids, which are the building blocks to build the proteins that will make up skeletal muscle, all these processes are being enhanced or are being promoted by growth hormone.